Hey, what's up guys? It's the next morning. Um, I'm in the office here doing some work for the business and I just want to give a little bit of an intro for the video you're about to watch. Um, what I'm doing is um, extending two PVC systems that I've already installed um, because they were just kind of eroding the property a little too much and the landscaper came and the homeowner had talked and they wanted them extended and I said that's no problem. So I gave him a price and went out to the job site and just started knocking that out. Um, I also did another gutter runoff system, which I'll do a separate video for. Um, but yeah, um, enjoy. All right, let's get right into it here. Um, I, I made a mistake right off the bat. I should have uncovered more of my previously uh, installed gutter system. That way I could see the actual trajectory of the pipe instead of just kind of not guessing, but just, you know, not, not really 100% knowing. And then I made a mistake and I had to do a secondary trench that was like eight inches further to your right. Um, regardless, but we're using the SDR35 um, sewer and storm drain water pipe here, and that's just what I had readily available to me, so that's what we're going to use. They use the same fittings as your standard Schedule 20 um, drainage pipe. All right, I'm un uncovering the end of the previously installed system here. Um, and this is just that um, Schedule 20 s and I'm pretty sure it's a Schedule 20 pipe. Regardless, it's a thin wall uh, drainage pipe. So I'm just kind of getting a good, um, you know, uncovering on that. And then I'm going to make a nice uh, clean uh, flush cut here and clean out from underneath it. You want a nice surface that way um, you can get your primer and your, your, um, your glue on there. No dirt or anything like that. So... Now, this is about where I found out that I made a mistake and, and had to do a little bit of retrenching. I forgot if I filmed that or not, but regardless, just getting some primer on there. And I think I'm going to glue the first stick in. I don't quite remember, but either way, I'm just going to get the coupler on there first. And looking back, there's a bell end on this pipe. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just get lost in your own thought, you know, whatever. Coupler, slide the bell over. Either way, it achieves the same thing. All right, this is where I realized I made my first mistake. It's not a big deal. Um, I, I do this a lot and I still make mistakes. It's it's fine. Um, it's just a little more digging. This is that super plush dirt. So um, I don't have to worry about it. The construction company brought in six or seven inches of fresh fill. So it's not a big deal for me to do this. Now, if you were trenching through a lot of roots and stuff, this would be way more of a bummer, but that's not the case here. So moving on, but um, yeah, regardless, uncover your pipe first, find your trajectory, trace your outline like you'd see I did with the PVC saw, and then cut. You don't want to force your pipe into a trench that it doesn't fit into. It's just not going to work out for you. It's not going to have a good seat on the coupler, and you're going to end up with roots in your system. All right, just using some purple primer and um, some medium body uh, clear PVC cement, and it's pretty hot. It sets up pretty quick. And, you know, I've had success with this. Uh, I've seen some stuff where people say don't use purple primer, and I can see that. I mean, it likes to just fall off this, this SDR35 pipe, but it still cleans, removes grease, and softens up the uh, PVC up a little bit. So it's, um, it's good to use, in my opinion. All right, this is the second gutter runoff. I'm just doing the same thing I did in the first one, uh, except I learned my mistake here, so I'm going to go ahead and uncover the pre-existing system first and then I'll make my cut clean the fitting and then you know we have to cut a 45 degree angle here to get down to where we want to be so I, I just put a uh, without glue without primer I'll just put my angle on there first that way I can kind of test fit and uh, see where I want that to end up but 100% um, if you can learn anything from this video it's uncover enough off of that first system to gauge the trajectory of your new pipe all right, this time 
I did it the right way. I set up my angle, my 45, got the first stick set up just perfect where I wanted it, and then traced it with the shovel here. Doesn't matter how you trace it. This is how I handle the situation. It works out for me, and this trench turned out uh, actually pretty close to perfect. So I had to widen it a couple areas, but um, you layout matters a lot with PVC because I don't care if you're using a trench or hand digging like I am, using an excavator or whatever else. I mean, you want to have either some paint, traced, masonry line, something that lets you know exactly uh, where you're going off those angles because it's just going to create a lot of extra work. So, yeah. All right, doing the same thing, just getting some glue on here. That pipe, that first stick of pipe, I recommend you glue the 45 or whatever fitting to that pipe first. That way you can get the correct angle because if you glue it the other way, if I would have done it the other way of what I just showed you, um, it just sometimes, I mean, unless you just get lucky, or you just have a lot of a lot of experience a lot of times it just won't line up and you're going to have to force it into a situation um so you're going to have to pop the glue loose and that's just never good so i recommend that you glue the first stick of pipe on or at least a stick with the fitting and then uh, glue it onto the pre-existing pipe all right got a couple sticks of this glued in well at least one and this is the second one here so finishing off this trench you can see the other system that i've already kind of installed but haven't backfilled yet now what that what i'm doing here is i'm going to bring these together and then hit another 45 so that they're parallel to each other they have future plans of doing a rain garden down here i'm not going to be the one installing that but they said they might stub it out into there that's their decision i'm not saying i agree with it or disagree with it but regardless i want to set up the next contractor for success and that's kind of what i'm about so uh, if he wants to wire these together it'll be easy to do that and i'll show you that in a second All right, um, doing another 45 here, and you can kind of see what I was saying when I said bringing these parallel together. So they'll run parallel about, I don't know, 18, 20 inches apart from each other, and that'll be um, nice for the next guy who comes along and if he ever ties these together or whatever else. But, yep, just getting that angle in there, propping it up with a PVC saw, digging out a little underneath it um, because I realized my slope wasn't the way I liked it or I wanted it, and, yeah, just digging out a little bit for the pop-up. Um, so we're not doing a rock bed underneath these pop-ups at all um, because they are going to be modified in the near future. Not by me, like I said before, but I'm not going to go through the extra trouble of putting stone underneath it and stuff like that when, you know, it's it's just going to be modified and it's all going to be for nothing. So just making sure we got it nice and packed in underneath and, um, you know, just moving on from there. I'm just going to extend this right. Um, downspout uh, to the same length as the other one over here so I take a measurement glue on a coupler and um, just cut a piece out so that you know they're the same length and stuff I'm, I'm kind of OCD about that I like to, to be uniformed and you'll see me later in the video actually pull one up a little bit so they're at the same height at least you know from the eye so that you know it, it looks good they're that one's not deeper than the other one or anything else um, yeah I'm not too worried about the erosion that uh, these are going to cause at the end like I said they'll be modified so if they create a little pit and they're eroding the the uh, ground a little more that's fine this is actually one of the lowest points of the yard so it's it's it won't be you know the water won't have a lot of velocity it'll probably pool up around these pop-ups more um, you know uh, more so than than causing any erosion problem so yeah just getting a good backfill on this and uh, making sure I'm packing it in nice, making sure the pipe's supported, it's not bouncing around on the ground. Um, I see that happen more times than not. You don't want your pipe floating out of the ground or anything like this. This is probably one of the best jobs and best soil you could ever ask for if you're a drainage guy or if you're doing this DIY, so you're probably not going to have these ground conditions. This is just a video to kind of show you how I install them. It doesn't matter if there's roots or not. I've been there before. I've cut them all out. It's fine. Um, the only thing I'd recommend if it's not new construction and you're not aware of where your utilities are, I'm pretty sure it's the law in most states, just make sure you 811 or, or whatever, you know, just make sure you get your utilities marked so you're not smashing your fiber optic lines, uh, water lines, gas lines, etc. But 
um, yeah, just making sure we got a good backfill and going to rake this out and install the pop-ups and it'll be done. All right, so backfilling here, just about finished with the flathead shovel and I'm about to grab the tamper. It's important if, you know, basically these landscapers that you see on the left side of the screen, they're doing some hard work and they're about to put this sod in tomorrow. So I'm going to tamp this system down. Um, pretty well. I, I do a pretty good compaction, at least as good as I think you can get it done by hand. And that's to kind of hasten the compaction. And they're going to be bringing a um, sod moving, you know, forklift or whatever tomorrow. So um, we want to make sure that, you know, it's as compact as it can be. They've told me they're going to be plywood over it um, with some six by six or um, two by sixes. So at least that they won't smash the white SDR 21 pipe up uh, a little higher in these runs. But um, yeah, regardless, tamp it in nice and uh, you won't regret it. Alright, you're going to see that I'm writing on these pop-ups and what I'm writing is no glue. And I'm doing that for the contractor that comes after me that's installing the rain garden so he knows when he uncovers these, there's no glue on them and he doesn't have to cut them. He can just pull them off. Um, not that he wouldn't do that anyways, but, you know, hey, it's just one little thing extra I do for, you know, uh, my customers and for the contractors that come after me so anyways making sure the pop-ups are nice and level regardless of they're glued or not and um, I'm gonna pull one up here a little bit uh, just to make sure it's you know kind of level with the other one it was about half an inch or an inch below and I, I want the pop-ups to appear to be the exact same height um, and it also helps when the next guy if he wanted to he could easily adapt these to a six inch pipe or a um, why uh, sanitary tea whatever whatever he decides to do he can he can do it easily now that they're not only parallel but the pipes are um, level with one another all right just getting these pop-ups nice and buried packed in no big deal um, but this is really it that's we extended these gutters and I think it turned out pretty well tamp around them make sure that um, you know we get a head start on the uh, compaction and that's really it guys so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, like and subscribe um, give me some feedback in the comments and I love to hear your guys's comments and I like responding to them keeps my brain jogging and yeah thanks a lot peace